sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome to the first video of the second chapter of the local ecosystem module. What I'll do in this video, I'll cover the first stop point, which says examine trends in population estimates for plants and animal species within an ecosystem. So what I have to do for this stop point is examine, which means you just have to look at the actual patterns in terms of the trends of population estimates. So what I'll start, I'll start with a couple of examples, which we won't go over in this video in detail, but just generally examples. The first one is the Tasmanian tiger. This is the Tasmanian tiger. And the picture is actually in black and white, and the reason why is because it's basically extinct. We haven't seen any members of this species for a long time. And if you were to look at the actual trends, you've seen you know, a decent high number. Of, so this is the graph. Got numbers on here and time on the other axis. What you'd see is you see a, a decent number of the actual Tasmanian tiger population. But all of a sudden, you get a drop, and you get a higher drop, higher drop. And then now you're at zero, and you've been at zero for quite a while. So this drop would have started before the 1900s and from 1900s and this point which is more or less the lowest point was about 1900 because what we've done is we just hunted them to extinctions more or less so human intervention has caused the population estimates to decrease over time and now we're at this point and it's been the same for the last decades which is more or less at zero so we have no more Tasmanian tigers left. We can do the same thing for the Tasmanian devils. Uh, the Tasmanian devils are still alive, but their numbers have been decreasing as well. And the reason why is not because of hunting, but actually because of something called cancer. These have a specific cancer which gets transferred from one member of the species to the next member. And same thing with here. The actual cancer has only been around for a couple of decades, but ever since, Look at the numbers on the vertical axis and the actual time on the horizontal. What would have happened is numbers were steady for a while and all of a sudden they were affected by the cancer and then the numbers have been going down. down. So at the moment we're going down. We still have a few members left, but there's also a f threat of extinction for this Tasmanian devil because of this cancer. As soon as the cancer hit, the actual numbers have been going down. Now for something, for example, for the bluefin tuna, this is the bluefin tuna, this is one of the actual tunas we often have in our food. Its actual estimates, trends in population, are seasonal. So what I mean by that is every season they change. There's times when they're doing the season where they have high amounts and then they die and then they reproduce. So for example, let's say the vertical axis is your number of bluefin tuna and your horizontal is your time. So this might be their this might be the summer here and this could be the winter. And what happens is you actually tend to have normal patterns and all of a sudden they all migrate. You can see they're all leaving here. So they're all going to their breeding grounds. So they all migrate. And as soon as they migrate and they breed, all of these will actually die. There'll be a big drop in numbers, and all the offspring will then, after a while, be born and start to to come back in numbers, and it's back to steady. So you have this huge drop in numbers, which corresponds to your breeding season. So all of these actual bluefin tuna will go back to their breeding spots where they were born. They will die, I and mean, before they die, they will actually have babies. So here they die, and then their babies will be will be fully developed and the numbers will go back to normal. And this happens every year. So this happens every year. Right, so these were just a couple of examples of trends in population for different types of species. And the one we're going to cover in this video, we're going to cover the jellyfish. And we're going to cover the native Australian flora. So more or less quite a few different types of native Australian plants. And with the jellyfish, again, we have a graph. So it's important for you to be able to, able to draw graphs. And you should all know what to do with the horizontal and the vertical axis. The horizontal is always what we're measuring. So what we are measuring. And 
the horizontal is what we're measuring it against. So what we are measuring it against. So for example, for the example of the jellyfish, we're measuring numbers of jellyfish. So the actual horizontal, or sorry, the vertical here, this would be number of jellyfish because that's what we're measuring. We're measuring number of jellyfish. And what are we measuring it against? We're measuring against the actual time. So what time of the year it is. So the time and then the time in months. It's also important to actually give the unit. Unit is months. And in the other case, the unit is number. And then you should also give it a title. So for example, say number of jellyfish or Trends in population, trends in jellyfish population. Right? So these are the basic steps when it comes to graphing. You should know where to put your things that you're measuring. So that comes on your vertical axis. And you should also know where to put the what we're measuring against. So for example, if we're having this, then number of jellyfish is what we're measuring. It goes on the vertical. And the number of months, which is what we're measuring against, goes on the horizontal. And then for the jellyfish, the way it looks like, as you can see here, there's a huge boom of jellyfish. So there's lots of jellyfish. And this happens every year. And it happens during times when it's really hot and the temperature of the ocean is warmer. So if this, for example, were our summer, summer months, and then here would be our winter. And here would be our winter again. So this is a full year, a full cycle, 12 months. Then what would happen is you'd have lower numbers during winter. So these numbers here, I mean, you could, have, you could have a different type of, say maybe 10, like a couple, thousand, this would be more and then even more. So just have yeah, the, the actual numbers are going up. But what you would see is you'd see lower numbers during winter, they go up, reach their peak during summer, and then go back down for the next season of the winter. And this would be their peak here. Because if you go across, you could see that the numbers would be the highest. So this is the peak. And this happens for jellyfish. So the, the, the warm temperatures of the ocean are really good for the actual jellyfish to boom. So you see a huge boom in jellyfish. And this can actually cause a problem. Because you can imagine if, you have, if you're a fisher and you try to get fish, there's so many jellyfish in the ocean, you're going to have troubles not catching jellyfish and only catching fish. So you tend to have lots of jellyfish in your actual nets. But yeah, this happens every year and actually in most parts of the world as well. Another example is native Australian flora. Again, if we look at the graph, we have to have on the vertical axis what we're measuring. We're measuring numbers of native Australian flora on this axis. And on the horizontal, that's what we're measuring against. So again, we're measuring it in time. And then you can, you can give a unit, so maybe time in months again, in months. And then you'd say this is one month, two, three, four months. And these would be numbers. You just have some value here. So you might say this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And native, the word flora means plants. So we're checking the patterns for Australian plants. And Australian plants are actually so well adapted to the bushland. So this is here is a, is a bushland. And they need to have bushfires to actually germinate. Their seeds. What I mean by germination of the seeds, the germination of the seeds, that's really important because that's all about actually being able to grow your seeds. Germination means that first part, when that small bit of the first plant comes out of the seed, that's germination. So that happens after a bushfire. So numbers might be really steady, and all of a sudden they might drop dramatically, and then they would, after a while, they increase dramatically. And then what would that have caused? It would have actually been the bushfire here. So there would have been a bushfire here. Which could have been, you know, maybe during the summertime, summer here, dry summer times. Then the numbers would have gone down dramatically because they actually obviously all burned to death, so they died here. But then their offspring, the seeds, had the opportunity to germinate. So after a while, once they've germinated, the numbers will actually increase even beyond what they were beforehand. So this is after germination. So this is a quite a normal pattern for many of the strain flora, such as eucalyptus trees and such. They need to have bushfires to actually be able to reproduce properly. So I'll go over the actual dot point. It says examine trends 
in population estimates for plants and animal species within an ecosystem. So in your actual class, you might study different ones, but the main idea is just to know that, you know, you're looking at what happens over time in terms of the numbers of these different, whatever you're looking at, different plants, different animals. So sometimes they'll be going up and then for whatever reason, and you should know that reason, whatever the reason is, they might be going down more than usual or up more than usual. And that's the crunch point, the, what, the reason why they're actually going up and down. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.